funny because while I was uh, sipping my first coffee of, coffee of the day, Mike Gorman was ripping this team a new one, man. Mike Gorman was swearing. <laughs> he was acting like he didn't like, like like he was on a boomer podcast. rage. No, we got no. boomer <laughs> rage. No, no. the real one. With these damn he boomers. Swore, he dropped the BS and then he said it again. Like yeah, because this is bullshit. like I was like okay, he's mad. He's mad, mad. Like that's he, he, that's he angry. Mike. And and yeah, he's he's big man. And it wasn't just about the Celtics. It was about the two All Stars. What did you guys make of that? Calling calling them out, saying that pretty much they care more about their stats than they care about uh, making the team better or making their teammates better, rather. What do you think, Bobo? It was fair. Uh, again, I have said through all of this, everybody's warranted a criticism mm. here. Now, I don't think any of these players and actors that we've criticized and uh, blasted at certain times should be thrown out the door, fired, uh, traded, these kind of things. But... I, in particular, have I Tatum the last few games, and it feels mm-hmm. like he is losing trust in the system, um, in their ability to win these games. I mean, 32 minutes tonight, one assist, that's the kind of thing we're talking about, and that's what Gorman was talking about in particular, the assist numbers, the assist rate of this team, the ball movement, the percentage of makes that are coming off assists. I think it was about 40 to like 19 tonight in the end, maybe a couple more because the bench hit a bunch of shots down the stretch. And that honestly probably pumped up their assist numbers as a team, the way that bench played the final 15, uh, 12 minutes. So I don't see the ball movement out of those two. It feels like they're stalking the ball more than ever. I give Brown credit because it's at least downhill action, transition. Again, early in this game, I thought his aggression was needed offensively. But defensively, I don't see what I need to from Brown. And that's half the battle that we're talking about right now. So those two in particular definitely have not set a good standard for this team. But I also think the weight that's been put on them has been particularly unfair with this condensed schedule, with some of the ailments that Brown's gone through. I know Wick mentioned the COVID situation with Tatum that he's had to go through at this point. So I don't look at these guys like some of the harshest critics have said and said they're selfish, they're in it for themselves, uh, they're blowing off this team at this point, because that's not who they've been in the past. I think they're both just going through the first crisis of their careers, frankly, when we look back on it. I mean, 2019 was bad, but there were never any crisis moments until the playoff ending there. Um, And then on top of that, the fatigue, uh, the ailments, the physical wear and tear of the amount of stuff they're being asked to do. So I think there's a larger context to why they're playing the way they are right now. I don't think they've said, screw this, we quit. Um, But it's not good. The results are all the same in the end. Yeah, I, I I appreciated what what Gorman said. I thought there was a lot of truth to it. Um, from him, the voice was powerful. From him, from from, yeah. from him of all people. I mean, geez, right. you, you know. But and he's seen a lot of Celtics basketball. He's seen a lot of good teams and a lot of bad teams. And I think he has a good finger on on the pulse of you know the sort of bones of a team. You know, he doesn't just come out and shoot from the hip. You know, I think he forms a lot of you know, educated opinions and he probably talks to people and just has a good idea of, you know, where this team is at. And a lot of the stuff he said was true. I mean, yeah, one-on-one, these guys are two of the more talented players. Statistically speaking, you can make the, they're, you know, all-stars. Listen, we talked about a few, a few games ago, we saw a situation where both of them weren't going to make the team, which, you know, of course they, they did. Uh, but a guy like Trey Young was snubbed, right? I mean, a guy like Sabonis, who they're going to see Friday, was snubbed. They made the all-star All Star team, but they're going up against players who are actually playing like all-stars and playing like they want to win, not playing just to fill up the stat sheet. And by the way, these guys aren't really necessarily filling up the stat sheet. I mean, they're trying, but the way that they're, <laughs> playing, right, the way that they're yeah. playing right now is horrible. But on the other end, it kind of goes back to, okay, well, who are they playing with out there? When you see Tatum taking 20 shots or Brown taking 20 shots, it's like, who else do you want to take in those shots when Kemba sits and Smart's out? There's not a whole lot of other options. Yeah, we want Neesmith to take more than zero shots like he did against Dallas. But in terms of go-to guys, I think these these guys like Tatum and Brown are thinking, well, you know, I'm not necessarily super confident that, you know, player Y over here to my left is going to be in the right position or is going to make the right decision or hit the shot. So I'm going to go ahead and trust myself to, to do it for right or wrong. Um, It's not good team basketball, as Mike said, um, which I totally agree with. And it's why they're losing, because it is a superstar league, but you're only going to go as far as, you know, the depth guys are going to get you. If it's just two on five out there, it's a numbers game. You know, obviously you're not going to, you're not talented enough to compete like that. Right. 
It's interesting. Though. One of you are, all right, maybe it's a little too early for this, but it's already there for me. Uh, either one of you starting to think that maybe these two are just having a tough time playing with each other in the same court? Like, I don't know. I think when Kemba's not there, it makes things difficult in the sense that they don't have someone to sort of play off of and, and, and open opportunities off the ball. And obviously another scoring threat, another uh, you know perimeter threat, another uh, player that teams have to go out and, and defend and obviously it's going to make things easier for, for two uh, scores like like Jalen and Jason, but I, I don't know, man. But I mean, like between between Jalen's post game comments and Jason's uh, body language, there's some sort of disconnect. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking these two need to like just have a sit down, hash it out, and really just on some like grown man shit. You know what I mean? Like just like listen, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and reel the team in, and just really dig into these guys. But do either one of you even can you either one of you even envision either one of them doing something like that it's just not their personality right it's just not who they are so what are we talking about here then who ha- someone has to do that and if it's not them they have to be at least someone that initiates it or is part of that process because you're the two best players on the team the team is struggling so, you know under 500 they have mm-hmm. to be the one to wake this team up and they have to do it in a way that they've never done it before well that's that's all goes with leadership i mean these guys want to be yeah want to be the leaders, right? I mean, they want, you know, right. they get the credit when the team's playing well. Um, they got to take the criticism when the team's playing bad, but they can't go up after a loss and no comment the press conference or give, you know, you know, answers that, you know, totally just disregard the question. It, it That's part of being a leadership. You might not like it. You might not want to deal with the media or deal with, you know, everything that it comes with being a superstar player, but your team's relying on you on the court and off the court to lead them and set the example. So, that's the one thing that I, I actually thought Jalen Brown would be a perfect leader because of, you know, I think he's just a strong, strong character, and you know, on and off the court. And I, I see a lot of leadership qualities in him, which is why I've been surprised at some of the way he's handled some of the post game uh, and some of the way he's some of the way he's, you know, looked on the court. Like, you know, Bobby yeah. mentioned with the defensive side of things. So I am a little surprised to see that. I don't know if they're frustrated with each other, or just frustrated with themselves or the situation. I have no reason to believe that they can't play together. I'm not going to go that far. Um, yeah, I, right. I, I don't. I, I think it's like I don't know if they, they just they're having trouble with it, you know, and they just they better just, figure it out because you know right. like, they they are going to have to play with each other. You know what I mean? Like they're not going anywhere, so they better learn to play with each other. I don't know if they're super close friends. I, I'm not saying they are or they aren't. I don't know. 